When I was growing up here in Brooklyn, at that time, it was the traditional role that men were in charge of the house and they were the breadwinner. By the time I got grown, that changed. Women started becoming breadwinners. In fact, now, over a third of women earn more than their husband or their mate. And we've seen a shift between who is the head of the house and a question on who is the breadwinner and therefore who's the dominating or domineering presence in the household. It's an interesting paradigm shift, or is it a paradigm shift? And does money really matter in a relationship? Rakia, you uh, have dealt with this issue about men and women, black men and women in your radio shows and dealt extensively with it. Is this uh, exaggerated or is there a real tension between now who's the dominating force in our homes? I mean, we're in a time where for women, mainly, and I can talk for women of color, um, where our men don't have jobs. And we know that it's a mixture of racism, um, the, the prison system, um, and just society and, and, and social factors. So yeah, there, there are women that are in relationships, me being one of them, where you, know, you make more than the man that you're in a relationship with, but it's a matter of, can the man handle that? Some men are insecure about that. Some men can't take their woman making more than, more than them because of what you just said. It's uh, old school ideas of the man is supposed to be the breadwinner. Steven, you make a lot of money. I mean, most women probably wouldn't. You wouldn't have this problem. Most women don't make your kind of money or more. But, but help me out with this. Well, I think, um, <clears throat> I think it's important to understand. I understand what Ricky is saying. You know, however, I think that when you look at society as a whole, I mean, obviously, you look at the prison system and, you know, a, a bunch of black men being incarcerated. You know, we talk about these things all the time. And I was raised by five women. I have four older sisters and my mother, so I w I'm, I'm a very old-fashioned kind of guy. My mother raised me to believe that, you know what, until you can provide for not just yourself, but your family, you don't have a right to be an authoritative figure in your household. That's just a fact of, that's just a fact of life. Um, but it wasn't always just about money. It was about how you conducted yourself, what kind of a leader you were. And I get into this argument with my sisters all the time. You know, it's not just about money. It's about understanding your role. Everybody has a role. A man has a role and a woman has a role. And I don't care how much money you make. I don't care how successful you are. I don't care how empowered you may be. When you come home, that's still your man. And I don't care how much money this man has or how much he lacks. If he walks into his house and he feels second fiddle, then you know what? Ultimately, he's going to find another house that makes him feel like That's he's right. the top dog. That's right. That's the reality so, of the so situation. Say it, amen. That's I mean, right. What, what, what? That's right. And this has to be said again and again. Listen, from what I read from where my mother grew up, my grandmother and so forth, back in the Harlem Renaissance, when we were required by law to be together and to stay together when maybe our mother was a nurse and our father was a sanitation worker she made more or whatever when he got on that train to go back uptown to Harlem or whatever they, they were man and woman. that was that's my woman and that's my man that's the end of it but when we were so happy and singing in the streets kumbaya and stuff we're gonna you know um, we integration and so forth black women started to uh, adopt the the mindset of the oppressive racist system and in terms of how we regard our men. See, we think that just because we got a paycheck and we work around white people and so forth, and we wear a little, you know, our skirts and little suits and everything, and we, we adopt a masculine energy modality, and then we act towards our men like we're men. Now, not only are we acting like men towards our men and, and, and adopting what white people feel and believe about our men, that's what's causing the separation in this so-called battle. What do you think about that? I mean, I know I'm going to get a lot of letters yeah. on this. Good. Is I, that old school? <laughs> that's or? true. It's not. I mean, <laughs> I understand why some women may act like that. I, I like to call it the Amazon syndrome. Um, let's look at history. I mean, if you go back to slavery, I mean, the men were taken away. So therefore, the women had to step up and the women had to take care of the kids and the women had to do it by themselves. So this is a mentality where you have been taught as a female to listen, 
don't depend on a man. He may not be. These abandonment uh, issues. He may sorry, not be. Steve, I, I, Steve I, been trying to well, break in. Go well, ahead. I, I've been trying to break in because I think that, see, here's where it gets a bit tricky. Yeah, men were taken away. Yeah, you had to provide for yourself and whatever. But what a black man is saying in most situations is that recognize what transpired. No real man mm -hmm. wants to rob a woman of her dreams. Mm -hmm. What he's saying is, is that, remember, I'm a part of that dream. You know the trials and tribulations That's I right. went through. You know what I I had to deal with the problem is not the trial and tribulations that a black man goes through it's the fact that he comes home and this woman who is benefiting mm -hmm. from his trials exactly. and tribulations exactly. doesn't recognize exactly. that she's benefited from his trials and tribulations and instead sits there and looks at him like he is a malady like he is a liability mm -hmm. instead of an asset right. then she turns around and wonders why he says the hell with you right. I'm gonna move on and go and get someone else who appreciates yeah, my value will. as a man mm -hmm. and then you're sitting back and looking at you you know I, I think we're, we've been oprah -fied. For lack of a better and, word, and, further, and that's and that's the problem. You don't further. talk like this on the ESPN. Right. Right. Yes, actually, 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 yes, I do. Yes, I do. I just talk about. There is a disparity between African American men and women when it comes to financial opportunity and jobs. If you look at the history um, throughout slavery, we had more opportunity. Um, black men have less opportunity. It's very difficult. The question keeps being raised whether or not economically black women are doing better than black men. And there are instances where that is true. But so what? If you're in a relationship and that woman earns more money than you earn, prompt her, push her, help her. Don't be ashamed. That's old. That's antiquated. In any situation where there's balance, you have one parent that nurtures the family, the other parent, that's teamwork. Where does it say, where is it etched in stone that the breadwinner must be the male? I don't think it's etched in stone in anywhere but our minds and our hearts. If a road leads to the point where she becomes the breadwinner, God bless her. Well, what, what are you finding in your data? Generally, they're all hallucinating. When we look at our community, this is what's happening. And it's distressing to me. That's why I come across so passionately, is that there's a, there's a pool here of men and women that relate to each other, black men and women that relate to each other on a very healthy level. And then there is this pool over here of women that only socialize with only other women. And that's where they get their information about the world, and particularly men. And that's why half of them don't know what they're talking Thank about. Thank you. Thank you. And and you said and, church. and right. that's who and that's who they go to, the talk show producers go to, so they can call on these women to get on television to demonize black men. And then there's this then the men over here are the only thing they want is a woman. Okay. So the women that only and, and they admit that they don't like men, they don't like black men, and they're not lesbian. They don't like men, they don't respect them, they don't trust them. But then they try to get with one. And I'll be very clear with them and say, why do you want to be, why are you at a party? Why are you even talking to men other than the flir to, to further your, your craziness for being? Well, you know, because black women, black people in general, yeah. we all need therapy. Yes, I agree. Okay? We all need therapy. I agree. And to be in a relationship, we all need couples therapy. But, be, be but it's a that. taboo in our community. Be so with that. Right, but exactly. But to be able to say, like Stephen said and like you said, you know, you need to know how to act. I think a lot of black women know that. I think we know how we need to act. But it's one thing to have been brought up in a family and been trained mm -hmm. a certain way. And it's another thing to say, okay, let me work to change this. It's about, I think, like, Let me ask you something therapy. before Steve jumps in. She said, <laughs> she, as Brina said, before about uh, the role of black men and, and, and he knowing that he's the man, if he's not the man, he'll find a house where he'll he get is some the peace. Man. Do you feel that that is still the uh, accepted structure that young black women see the man as the dominating factor? Not now? anymore. I mean, not in this day and time. I mean, we want to, you know what? We want to, we, you know. I'm not one that's been about the money, like, oh, he needs to make a certain amount of money. But a lot of women are, you know, but you want your man at, to a certain extent, uh, you want to come home and him to make certain decisions. You know, you may try to test him. You may try to say, all right, we're going to do this and get all bossy. But at the end of the day, I think every woman wants that man to step up and, and be the man. I, I, I